What would Jesus do? And about the topic of feed the hungry, what might he say? Well, without fear of contradiction, rest assured that regarding being there for our brothers and sisters, his response would include feed the hungry, heal the sick, and lend a helping hand. Consider the scripture. I'm in the 25th chapter of Matthew. When the Son of Man shall come in all his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Now there you've got to have an appreciation for some Jewish symbology. In the Hebrew mindset, being a sheep is fine. No problem. You do not want to be a goat. The goat is a sin bearer. The goat is the one that's doing the Passover. The sins are cast upon him. He's driven out into the far country. So he's going he's to separate them, all the holy angels with him. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left hand. Now the one place you do not want to be is on the left hand of God. God is very right-handed. And the Hebrew scripture certainly supports that. Then shall the king say unto those on his right hand, and this will verify that, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So if you're one of the sheep and you wind up on the right hand, what you've got to look forward to is being blessed with all the blessings. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you right from the very beginning. And then why? What's the rationale for that? Well, I was hungry, Jesus went on. I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when did we see thee hungry and feed thee or thirsty and give thee drink? When did we ever see you as a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and, and come unto you to visit you? When did we ever do that? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily, truthfully, truthfully, I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Any questions? Where Jesus stands on the topic of being there, healing the sick, feeding the hungry. Don't think so. The consequence of remaining indifferent to an invitation to grace that explicit was clearly appreciated by Dr. Muhammad Yunus. He was a founder of the Grameen Bank in Bangladesh. He left no stone unturned in his crusade on hunger and poverty in a country that defines poverty and hunger. He once observed, as long as one single human being in this vast world dies of hunger or lacks the basic biological resources necessary for survival with dignity, our society will be less than the society mankind deserves. Furthermore, if I do not believe in creating that society or fail to dedicate my creative energy to building that society, I'll remain less than a complete human being. So, our invitation is to dedicate this evening to rediscovering the sacred connection dedicated to weaving the creation into a seamless kinship of service to all life. We commit this evening to giving thanks for the hidden treasures of the inner kingdom, subtle treasures that we are all heirs to because we share the same impeccable lineage as sons and daughters of the Father, Mother, God. 
We dedicate this evening to opening our minds and hearts that we might receive all the gifts the Father has built into the existence, especially those moments of reaping we are blessed with the very moment we choose to dedicate our creativity to a brother or sister reaching out a hand for a little love, a little support, a little comfort. Though the times seem to be changing, a closer look reveals that it's only in the details. The promise of this moment is elegantly consistent with the promise of all moments long past. For what was creative principle then is just as surely creative principle now. So let us resolve to respond to that reality by remembering the past is ours. Let us learn from it. The present is ours. Let us fulfill it. The future is ours. Let us enrich it. Knowledge is ours. Let us apply it. Disease is ours. Let us heal it. Racism is ours. Let us end it. Bigotry is ours. Let us banish it. War is ours. Let us render it unthinkable. The environment is ours. Let us preserve it. Peace is ours. Let us claim it. Democracy is ours. Let us protect it. America is ours. Let us ennoble it. The world is ours. Let us serve it. The dream is ours. Let us claim it. Truth is ours. Let us embrace it. And for all that, and so much more, let us be grateful and affirm, this is my Thanksgiving day right here.